So this is our preview for the first half at least of 2017. It's hard to make predictions, but uh, next year is just around the corner and there are certainly are some trends worth talking about. So I think this will be a year uh, in which we'll see uh, more politics, making headlines, making moves, and less uh, central banks, okay? So up to um, 2015, I would say, I mean, roughly speaking, central banks were the only game in town. Uh, Mario Draghi, the head of the European Central Bank, and also other central bankers complained that governments need to do more. In 2016, we didn't see governments doing more, but we've seen central banks uh, sharing the impact on markets with huge political events. Uh, the Brexit vote in June, and the US elections, which brought Trump in November. My prediction, I think I'm not the only one here, is that politics will lead in 2017, and monetary policy will follow. Politics, it's not only elections, but also fiscal policy, and also central bank appointments, but in general, um, politics, everything related to government decisions uh, or elections will lead. Okay. Um, before we move on, I see here a question. Um, uh, as far as good morning, you mentioned that uh, pound yen uh, won't stay in a range for too long. Which way do you suggest it's going to break? Um, I think it'll break to the downside because of pound weakness uh, during 2017. We'll talk about the pound during this uh, 2017 preview. Okay, um, I'll, I'm sure I'll give you a fuller answer in a few more minutes. Uh, let's continue. So we're talking about a transition to politics. Let's begin now with the United States of America. Uh, US dollar is the king. So here's Donald Trump. He'll be inaugurated as president of the United States on January 20th. It's actually only in three weeks. He made huge and contradictory, contra contradictory <laughs> election promises throughout the campaign. What's important for markets is how much fiscal stimulus will he provide? He'll probably judge on the actions in day one and, and, and then throughout the first 100 days. 100 days from late January is uh, late April. Um, and markets expect fiscal stimulus, but fear trade decisions. So um, what regarding uh, fiscal stimulus, uh, Donald Trump talked about uh, spending more on the military, not cutting Medicare and Medicaid, um, cutting taxes, that mean income taxes and corporate taxes, and maintaining a low deficit. How are you? How is he going to do all that together? I mean, you're going to spend so much money, and where's where's the money going to come from? He talked about money coming from a huge growth. Um, all the economists, well, the ones that are willing, on his side as well see this is too far out, so we expect something uh, to be a bit more moderate. On the trade front, he promised to, I uh, said China and Mexico are killing us, he wanted to bring more uh, the manufacturing jobs back to America, he won't really be able to do that because some of these jobs are lost to automation, to rob robots, and uh, also on the trade front, of course there's lots of fear that he'll destroy global trade, uh, so these are the fear, I mean hope for lots of fiscal stimulus that will ignite the economy. On the other hand, we have uh, fears of trade, okay? Um, so I think we'll have some kind of a disappointment from Donald Trump. Uh, it's, it's not that uh, he will not do anything. It's not that he'll do only damage, uh, but there will be only some tax cuts for corporations and for individuals. Only limited infrastructure spending, so Maybe New York will get a revamp of only one airport, not all three. Just an example. Uh, more military spending, I will probably see that. Uh, but, and hopefully, no real trade wars. Promises to break up NAFTA, or uh, we'll probably, we won't see that. Perhaps no signing of the TPP, um, which already uh, he promised also after winning the elections, okay? So, I think we'll have a dis some kind of disappointment, but he will do some of the things he talked about. Now, what about the Fed? Uh, the <clears throat> central banks uh, still have a big impact. So the first rate hike is expected in June. 
it'll be enough time for the Fed to judge the economy, the strength of the US dollar, and um, what Trump actually does. The Fed says, always it's data dependent, and it's not only dependent on the data, but also on what uh, uh, Trump does, how Trump moves the economy with fiscal decisions. It's important to remember that uh, Yellen, Janet Yellen, pictured here, the chair of the Federal Reserve, ends her tenure in February 2018. It uh, seems like a long time from now because we're still in 2016, but in terms of central banking, it's not such a long time from now. Uh, we will probably hear about the next Fed chair. I mean, uh, Trump promised to replace her uh, towards the second half of the year, probably in the summer. In addition, there are two... Uh, Board, mem uh, board vacancies, so Trump can also nominate two other Fed members, so the Fed perhaps could be more hawkish. There's always a chance that uh, Trump will extend Yellen's tenure for another four years, okay? But uh, we, we don't know. Currently, we expect her to end her job in, uh, in a year, and speculation about the next Fed chair will begin uh, in the summer. Okay, so there will be uncertainty about that, and the Fed chair can be hawkish, can, he or she can be dovish, we don't really know. Uh, so what, what do I think about the US dollar in 2017? I see it resuming the rally early in the year on expectations for fiscal stimulus from Trump and the consequent uh, rate hikes from the Federal Reserve. Uh, a stronger dollar, though, could be also um, negative for the US dollar eventually, why? Uh, I mean, the pendulum can swing back because a stronger dollar makes inflation, pushes inflation lower. It could dampen the pace of hikes, dampen inflation, dampen exports, and swing the pendulum back. So a stronger dollar depresses inflation. So I see at the beginning of the year, in January, high hopes for Trump, extension of the trend seen in 2016. Uh, but after April, or perhaps even before that, there is room for the dollar to fall. If it, especially if it goes uh, too far, okay? Their expectations are just too high from the U.S. economy and from the Federal Reserve due to uh, Trump, okay? Um, so that's about the U.S. dollar. Now let's talk about Europe. I'm sitting here in Barcelona in the capital of the northeastern region of Catalonia in Spain. Uh, also here we'll have some action. Before that, in February, we have we might have elections in Italy. Lots of uncertainty about the uh, Eurozone's third largest economy. Okay, uh, remember, we had a referendum back in the early, well, just this month, in early December, and Prime Minister Matteo Renzi uh, resigned. We have another Prime Minister, Gentolini, I think his name is, and we're not sure if he's going to stay or if there are going to be elections. Uh, that's we, lots of uncertainty about that. Smaller country in March, we have elections in the Netherlands. You have to watch out there for Gert Wilders, um, the leader of the far-right party. Uh, it'll be sort of a telling sign about um, things to come. If he succeeds, well, he's not expected to be prime minister, but he might uh, enlarge his uh, take in the, gov in the parliament, and this could have an impact on other countries as well. We'll probably have sort of a mainstream government in the Netherlands. The most important country is France. France is the second largest economy. Uh, there we have a first round of elections, of presidential elections on April 27th. Sorry, I think it's 23rd. Sorry for that mistake. April 23rd. And um, then the second round runoff between probably Francois Fillon, center-right uh, candidate, the same party like Nicolas Sarkozy, a mainstream against probably Marine Le Pen, the extreme right, which has growing chances of becoming president. Currently, uh, opinion polls show a big lead for Fionn because uh, left-wing voters will probably vote for Fionn against the far right. But you never, never know about the turnout, about what happens there. That's a real worry, okay? Uh, in September, maybe a referendum for independence here in Catalonia, and in October, elections in Germany. The scariest scenario for Europe is this lady, uh, President Marine Le Pen, head of the National Front in um, in France. Uh, she vowed to leave the Eurozone. She said, call me Mrs. Frexit. Okay, Frexit for France, exit of the Eurozone. Clearly, there is no Euro without France. 
Um, she doesn't have to really follow her promises if she's elected. Things will begin breaking up uh, on their own. Anyway, it's a very, very scary scenario. Again, uh, her opponent, main opponent, as it seems at the moment, Francois Fion, has better chances. So if she wins, it's really devastating for the Euro. Uh, again, higher chances for her rival. If he wins, Francois Fion, maybe we'll begin seeing uh, headlines like peak populism. Things might begin getting uh, better, more mainstream, more stable, more market friendly. Okay. Elsewhere, uh, this will impact the ECB, but the ECB, European Central Bank, already basically laid out its plans for 2017. So at least in the first half of the year, they don't need to announce anything. I believe they'll be, they won't change policy until September. Um, so uh, governments will probably do more because it's an election year and finally doing what Draghi told them to do, maybe a bit more fiscal stimulus, hopefully. Uh, Draghi is still important, the ECB is still important, but certainly not alone. So we don't expect any big changes from the ECB uh, early in the year, at least. Uh, they'll be perhaps reacting to other uh, to governments, but not uh, working on their own. So my prediction for Euro dollar, I think we have a window, an open window for parity in January. Um, currently we're at 104.60 more or less. So I think with a stronger dollar, worries about elections in the Eurozone, we could have a big move in January. It could be a false break. We might see Euro dollar fall to uh, below parity, maybe to 98. Uh, but then, uh, assuming we have more, no disaster from Trump, uh, and um, we have, um, of course, uh, no uh, disaster in the French elections, we could see the euro begin rising in May. It depends on Fillon. It depends on Trump. Okay. Now, I guess I'll answer the question about we're moving to the UK, the question about pound yen. So Brexit, that's the, another big event of 2016. So Article 50 will be triggered in March. The government promised that it'll either be decided uh, by parliament or decided by, uh, well, the government, it doesn't really matter. Um, and negotiations will officially begin. Um, the Europeans will probably be very tough with the UK for several reasons, okay? The reasons are uh, that they will want uh, to show other countries that think of leaving, that leaving the European Union carries with it some kind of punishment. They want to deter other countries from doing that. In addition, um, they don't like, they don't want to give uh, Britain any kind of a good deal. They want to maintain unity. And the third reason, we have elections, okay? Uh, we have elections in the Eurozone, so it's another reason I um, mean, in France, in Germany, in the Netherlands, in Italy, they want, want to keep things relatively stable, okay? Uh, regarding the negotiations, currently there is high uncertainty about what they'll entail if we'll have more uh, uh, what's called a soft Brexit. Soft Brexit means access to the single market, more free trade, and probably more immigration. Basically, at the Norwegian model, uh, officially being out of the European Union for the UK, but enjoying and, and also contributing, to basically being in, uh, or hard Brexit, uh, which means uh, less immigration, which some want, and also less access to the single market, which is bad for the economy. Uh, the hard Brexit talk so far from the government is probably only a negotiation tactic but you don't really know. Uh, this lady, Theresa May, uh, Prime Minister of the, uh, Britain, uh, we don't really know what she fully, fully wants. Um, we will learn that throughout 2017. Uh, the Bank of England, here is Mark Carney running a marathon. Um, currently, the stance of the Bank of England is to stay neutral for a while. Uh, if they cut rates, it could push inflation higher. The huge fall of the pound in 2016 hurt, uh, well, hurt UK consumers. A lot of products are imported or a lot of British products rely on imports from other countries and cutting rates too much to help the economy could push inflation too high. But also higher rates uh, could hurt the economy 
because they will dampen demand. Okay, so basically, uh, Mark Carney here and the Bank of England are between the rock and the hard place. Um, fear of stag stagflation, inflation without growth is quite worrying. Okay, so not such, I'm not really optimistic for the UK. Um, so Brexit, I think, will begin biting so far, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, Q3 GDP was actually great, was actually 0.6%. Brexit will probably begin biting in 2017. Uncertainty about what kind of Brexit will have, uh, will hurt uh, investment. Okay, and jobless claims, the claimant count change, that's already rising. So maybe employment, which is in a very good situation at the moment, is probably uh, peaked. So unemployment could begin rising, um, if only because it, uh, well, just a change of trend. And Article 15, just the triggering of it, could bring a new wave of worry. We know Article 50 is coming. The referendum was held six months ago, a very long time ago. But um, the actual move, uh, the actual official announcement that the UK is leaving the European Union could uh, still bring a new wave of worry. So, uh, pound dollar, my prediction, it has room to the downside. I would say that 115 on pound dollar is not too low, okay? Uh, that we've seen these levels for well, a minute or two in the flash crash in October. And I think it's possible to see that once again. It could tick up when the dollar falls. I mean, if we have a disappointment from the Donald, then we could see it uh, move up, but I don't see it rising above 130. So uh, I, um, what I foresee for pound dollar is mostly uh, negative, okay? Uh, or negative mostly for the pound, negative for the pound against the dollar, against the yen, against the euro, okay? So that's why I see the pound falling. Moving to Japan, I see Japan uh, as more stable in uh, 2017. We could see a big range in, in dollar-yen, but in general, Japan is much more comfortable with the current level of dollar-yen, uh, currently at 117, uh, 118. So these are comfortable levels. Inflation can move a bit higher. Uh, Japan is competitive, and it's important to, to mention that Japan is competitive not only with the United States, but also with China, the first and second largest uh, uh, well, economies in the world. And that's good news. Uh, the Bank of Japan recently announced new policy back in September. Um, so at least in the first half of the year of 2017, I don't expect any new announcements. So basically their policy is to target, um, is to target, uh, 10-year yields, long-term yields, to keep them around zero. Uh, so they're talking about the target, not about the level of bond buying. And uh, they'll probably want to stay also out of the spotlight for some time. Politically, uh, Shinzo Abe, the picture here at the bottom, the man on the left, the prime minister, he has a firm grip, no opponents within his party, no opponents within the opposition, and a relatively stable economy. And we're talking about a lack of real growth in Japan, but the unemployment rate is low. And well, uh, for everybody, anybody that's been to Japan has seen what great country it is. Um, so Shinzo Abe has a firm grip on power. Uh, geopolitics could become a worry though. So we don't know what Donald Trump intends to do regarding um, the well, military umbrella that the United States provides to Japan and to South Korea. Uh, so that could be a worry. Uh, China is expanding in the South China Sea. Um, so that's a known unknown, okay? Um, and my range, it could be wild, okay? But I don't think we'll have a specific trend. So I see the pair moving uh, within a wide range, but around current levels, it means 110 to 125. Let's move now a bit more quickly to other economies, the Canadian uh, commodity currencies, starting with Canada. I see a big fall coming in the Canadian dollar uh, because oil prices have limited room to the upside. With every cut from OPEC, we have a rise in production from the United States. That's oil, Canadian oil. Tar sands here pictured in the bottom are expensive. Okay, I mean, production from the Canadian, Canadian tar sands is quite expensive. Uh, real estate prices in Vancouver and also Toronto and perhaps Montreal 
are a bit of a worry. The economy is still in transition from the oil uh, boom um, and demand from the United States could be limited. Again, I don't expect Donald Trump to provide uh, enough stimulus. Okay, so the Canada is dependent on two main things, oil prices and demand from its big southern neighbor. And <clears throat> this could be limited. Um, so basically, I think there are many factors playing against the Canadian economy, at least in 2017. So for 2017, the Bank of Canada, that's the governor here, Pelos, uh, they have an open door for rate cuts. First of all, their stance is a bit dovish. Um, I think that, uh, well, they talked about uh, an interest rate of minus 0 0.50 as the lower limit. Currently, the interest rate in Canada is plus 0 0.50, so I think we could see rate cuts, maybe not below zero, but uh, I wouldn't rule out any rate cuts. A weaker Canadian dollar has helped the economy in the past, um, and they might want to see that again. I mean, fall maybe some weakness in uh, 2017, and this will support a strong recovery perhaps in 2018 and 19. So 147, which was the peak early in the year, I think it's realistic for dollar CAD. Seems a bit far out, but I wouldn't rule that out. So I'm bearish on the Canadian dollar or bullish on dollar CAD for uh, 2017. I see more stability in other commodity currencies. Let's talk about getting this with the Australian dollar. They have a better transition from the mining boom, from uh, reliance on China. And we're also seeing a softer landing from China. Um, so their commodities, iron ore, um, uh, copper, have a slightly brighter future than oil. So uh, I think the Australian dollar has room to the downside, but it's mostly dependent on uh, the US dollar on Donald Trump. Australia could lose its AAA rating, okay, with due to some deficit spending, but we've seen that these rating agencies have uh, lower impact. I mean, there'll be, there'll be huge headlines about uh, these, this rating, but I think the economy will continue smoothly. We might see a wider range than in 2016, which was a bit boring for the Australian dollar. So between 0 0.6, between 63 to 80 cents there, but without too many swings, relatively stable uh, Australian dollar. Moving to New Zealand, here's a nice picture from New Zealand. They have a super strong economy. We've seen the growth rate moving up. Um, prices in uh, Auckland and other places are still rising. Uh, it's not only milk, super stable government. Um, I mean, we had a change of prime minister now, but that was done uh, very nicely. Milk prices that have gone up in the latter part of 2016 could slide, but the economy is certainly resilient. The RBNZ, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, would prefer a weaker currency, uh, but I'm not sure they'll get it. Maybe we'll see Australian, the Australian dollar and the Kiwi dollar at parity. Regarding the Kiwi dollar against the US dollar, I see it in range between 65 and 75. Uh, basically stable, relatively strong, perhaps sliding a bit more, but only because of the strength of the US dollar, nothing New Zealand related. So I'm bullish on the Kiwi in general. Maybe not at the beginning of the year against the greenback, but later on for sure. And let's talk about another beautiful country. Switzerland still attracts safe haven flows, okay? Um, a Swiss National Bank still intervenes to weaken the currency. But if we do have lots of fiscal stimulus from Donald Trump, if we do have uh, more, a move to mainstream with Francois Fillon and higher oil prices, we could see the Swiss National Bank relax its interventions uh, if inflation rises worldwide. Again, this is not a currency I like, not a currency I like talking about too much because they intervene, they make trading much more complicated. But perhaps after... Uh, they announced their peg back in September 2011, removed it abruptly in uh, January 2015. So it's now almost two years since the the big S and bomb. Maybe, and, but they still intervene in markets. They might begin removing it uh, shortly. Okay. So to conclude our 2017 preview, level of uncertainty is high. I think uh, that's quite clear. A lot depends on Donald Trump. I've mentioned him not only 
uh, when I talked about the United States, but also even about New Zealand, for example. Um, politics in Europe, uh, Brexit included, are very important. France, Brexit negotiations, then Germany, of course, other places, including here in Catalonia. And we might also have some no unknown unknowns, okay? We might have the things flaring up in the Middle East, hopefully not. Uh, anything between India and Pakistan, uh, China, which seems stable at the moment, but you don't know what's going to happen there with the convention, with the uh, five-year meeting there in uh, October. Um, yeah, oil prices, remember the OPEC deal is due to last only six months. Okay, oil prices have been relatively stable. We don't know about that. I mean, we can talk about for hours and hours about anything else that can happen in markets. We don't really know. As I said at the beginning, uh, 2017 preview, but mostly for the first half, which is easier to see than, uh, than the second half. Okay, so lots of uncertainty going through. Again, I think stronger dollar at the beginning, weakening afterwards, but um, stay alert, stay strongly vigilant, as Fouché used to say, and it's going to be an interesting year. That's the only certain thing.